Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulahi kareem. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abad. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord, the keeper, the evolver, sustainer of all the world. Wa salatu, may the prayer. Wa salamu, and may the peace. Ella Rasulini Kareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the honest, honorable, noble, and generous messenger Muhammad Kareem Muhammad and all that follows. Dear believers, brothers and sisters, I greet you all. Assalamu And to those who are not Muslims that may watch this live, etc., that simply means peace be unto you. And it's plural upon you, your family, upon you physically, mentally, and spiritually. Alhamdulillah, we pray that Almighty Allah has accepted our Juma fast. That was last, this is a week now, when we were still fasting on this Yom El Juma on Friday. And we pray that Allah has accepted our fast and that He guide us and we achieve the taqwa that He says fasting is prescribed to give us. And we pray that everyone had a successful and wonderful id, id, it's a beautiful meaning, and although everything is different, different circumstances, our unique circumstances, I pray that Allah has accepted our intention, that we were able to make the best out of the situation, and always keep in mind that Allah is in charge, and he say, we will always be tried and tested. And as I always say every week, and always, even when I'm to myself, that our, our prayers and condolences and best wishes go to those, all of us who are struggling during this time of COVID-19, the coronavirus, and prayers go to those who have been infected with that, and we pray that Allah will allow them to overcome that. And those who have lost loved ones, that Allah will comfort the families of all of those. Uh, we're living in some unique times, trying times. Uh, we know with the coronavirus, but even in the midst of this, another kind of sickness that, are, that people are suffering and all kinds of chaotic, disturbing things are going on. Uh, for example, we know what's going on in Minneapolis, what happened to, uh, to the uh, brother Floyd and how the police officer put his neck knee on his neck and killed him in front of everyone while the man was crying and pleading that I can't breathe. And the other officers stood around. And we know that's not a reflection of all police officers. We know that. But, but there's always <coughs> some bad apple in the bunch. And so we see what's going on there in the midst of all of this which disturbs and affects all of us in some way. We see the protest and then within the protest, the looting and uh, fire, all kind of disturbance and violence. In the midst of all of that, it, it affects all of our senses to see that in the midst of all of this. And we constantly, dear believers, constantly pray to Allah for his mercy and for his guidance and his protection. And notice Shaitan, we always seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan, who Allah says, he is your enemy, and treat him as such. So, whatever is going on in this mix, we know that Allah says, to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth, and even what is between that. So, Allah is in charge always, and as believers, we believe and trust in Allah. And we look for him, for guidance, mercy, protection, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So we are to pray for each other, show love for each other as brothers and sisters, and the human family. Wish the best for the human family and do what we can. As, Muhammad, as Allah says in the Quran, that this ummah, this wusta, is to balance straight down the middle. And Muhammad is a witness to us, and we are witness to be a witness to humanity. So, dear believers, brothers and sisters,
and sisters. Today we just want to look at some, some concepts, mainly one main concept that inshallah will lead us to certain important information from Quran and, and Adin and inshallah we grow some in knowledge and wisdom, understanding. And that, that uh, concept, that word, one of the attributes of Allah is Adin, Adin, Adin. That's the Ayn, part A, the bar, like a like door, and some say door, depending on the name door, but it's door, T-H, but hard. And that word is root letters, is the ayn, the bar, and the mean. And this word here, uh, adim, adim, it means mighty, mighty, powerful. Some may translate it as uh, supreme, mighty, powerful. But from this root, the same adim, Allah is Adin. You get the word Idama. Idama, which means bone. And the connection, and we'll move through this, the connection as we move on, is that bones have to be mighty and powerful to support the flesh. So the bones are strong. You can beat somebody to death with a bone. So, so bones are strong and mighty, they have to be to support our structure. And when you read Surah 23, when Allah talks about the creation of man, I think that's in Ayat 10 on, or 12, and he mentions the seven levels of creation for the man from Surah Latin Mentin, extract of clay. Then from the clay, he says, the uh, new fat, the life germ, is the second. The third is the Allah, that which clings. Uh, blood, clock, clean, Allah. Then mukdat is they say the lump of chewed flesh. The lump of chewed flesh. And this lump of chewed flesh, then it goes to the fifth, Allah says, which man. He puts the bone in the flesh to give it some kind of structure. Then man, he puts the skin on that, and then he causes us to grow into another creation or come out of the womb, etc. But anyway, so... Adim, Ibarman, right? Bone, power, might. So these are, this is what we want to look at a little bit today, inshallah. This, this, this word here, this concept, this, this here. So alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, we pray Allah will guide us and, and uh, yes, give us the guidance and the knowledge and the wisdom that we can say something to benefit us all. So, dear believers, we want to go to Quran first because we know, as Muhammad the Prophet said, I leave you two things. I leave you Quran, revelation, and my sunnah, my life example. And if whoever follows that, they will never go astray. But we know the Quran, the book of wisdom, prophecy, history. So we just want to start in sort of hasha, hasha. And I hope you have your Qur'ans. Whenever I, we do this now, I always ask that you have your Qur'an so you can follow along. Um, and we just come to Ramadan, so we know you're more familiar now with Quran. If you was able to read it from cover to cover, or whatever you was educated in, the month in which Quran was revealed. And we talked about the top beers last week as well, which we may touch on the significance of that if we get a chance. Always, even though it's done in ear time, but it applies. It's a 
sisters, we want to first go to Hasha, Sur 59, the gathering. And di different translations might have a different name or something. Uh, so this here, Hasha, the gathering, I had 21. Allah says in the Quran, inshallah we'll tie this all in. Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and you and you have this. Allah says, La anzalna hadha al Quran alla jibril illa raita hu ashi an mutasandi an min kashiyatillahi. And that is this is your read. Allah says, if or had he sent down this Quran on Jabal. On a mountain, right? Allah says, Laura It says, You would have seen, or you would see with your minds are ra'at. In comprehending ra'at, you know, you have basir, perception, ayn, your eyes, but here, ra'at, with the mind's eyes, that you would see, you would grasp that mountain. You would see that mountain humble itself, the translation have, but you would see it come down from the pressure of the Quran, the weight, the might of Quran. Had he revealed it on Jabu, right? On a mountain, you would see the weight of Quran. That mountain is there, you would see the weight of the Quran on that mountain. You would see that mountain come down, humble itself, it says. And it says, well, out of the fear of Allah, had he revealed it on a mountain. But brothers and sisters, what we do know is that it was revealed to a man on a mountain, Muhammad Sallallahu that he was on Mount Hira, which transformed to Jabal Nur, mountain of the light. Big, huge mountain. You go in the Mecca. Big. You know, Arafat was just on the plane. Huge mountain. Got to really put some work in to climb up to the top. And he was in a cave. And, and you know, he's in a cave, and that mountain is on the earth. And the earth is called Mother Earth. So, really, you can get the idea that Mother Earth like a, a woman who was pregnant with that hill, big, big belly, right? Laying back like a hill or a mountain that the earth was pregnant at that time with Muhammad the Prophet, a big man, a mighty man. And in the ninth month of Ramadan, just like that baby come out in that time, push, 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 you fly back up. Read, I can't read. Read, I can't read. Ikra, this me, baby, because of the color. Read in the name of your Lord who created you. Push them on out, right? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Into the ranks, the brotherhood of the prophets. And we know it that connects to birth because now you say, Ikra bismi very God, He said, Thala Kala Salaman, Allah. He said, Who created you from me? Took me straight to the moon. Allah. Third level in the womb, right? Allah. So here Allah said, Had he been built on a mountain, but he did. Muhammad the prophet was on a mountain. But he revealed it to a man on a mountain. Letting us know that on a mountain, the weight of Quran would crumble that mountain. But that Muhammad, sallallahu his character, his uswa, his character was stronger than a mountain. He was up high above everybody in his character. And he was able to, in his beautiful character, carry the weight of Quran. Allah said he revealed it upon his heart. So Allah said that he revealed it on a mountain. And we're going to, inshallah, show why Muhammad Islam was able to carry the weight of Quran, whereas a mountain would not been able to carry the weight of a Quran. Now, when Allah says that, and you, you read on, you have Quran, Allah says, What do you Embellu, net ribu, heli nasila, ella, whom yet the fact 
is a similar to parables example. Parables. Right? For men to reflect on. Such are the similar to what we propound or give to men that they may reflect. That's what I'm looking and using on me, but that's what it says. That he give similar to. Parables. So he's letting us know he's not talking about a physical mountain that I'm giving you this 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 example, this parable. So that you will use your mind. That's to reflect using the mind. A lot mentioned, you know, uh, uh, the apple, right? That could make him there. But he said, reflect so that you will reflect on this. That the idol revealed him on a mountain. It would have brought it down out of fear and then shattered it. Reflect on that. What kind of mountain? The mountain of ignorance, the mountain of lies and deception, whatever kind. But but the reflection goes this way. Had I revealed it on a big mountain, Mount Everest, Mount Kilimanjaro, any of these mountains, he said the mountain would have humbled itself and been shattered out of the fear of Allah. But he said, I did reveal it to the man that was on the mountain. So he said, for that is for you to reflect, to use your mind to think about that. That we may be feeling we are climbing the mountain of distress, right? Of, 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 of calamity, of confusion in our life. With all that's going on, we're trying to get up to the mountain in life. The higher up you go, the broader your vision. That whatever mountain is in your way, that Allah says, if I reveal it on that mountain, I can shatter it. Trust in Quran. And the proof of it is, if you reveal it to Muhammad Islam, the model human being on a mountain, and did it shatter him? He born on the fitra. He said, Allah said, tell them, and at Bashar al Mithlakun, I'm a mortal just like you. And what Allah says of that mortal, he says, he says, Laka talab now in San Afi Asani I created you in the best mode, right? And he said, I told the angels to submit to you. And when I breathe into you of my spirit. So here's the the Basha, the mortal, good news bringer, Muhammad Islam. And we follow his sunnah. But he said, I'm a human like you, born on the fitra. So, so he said, I revealed it to Muhammad Islam on a mountain. And did it bring him down and shatter him? No, it raised him up into the ranks of the prophets. And the messenger of Allah didn't bring him down and raise him up. So, so something for us to reflect, always using our mind and our brain with sincere intention. So Allah says, had he revealed it on a mountain, he would have brought it down. But he said, that's, I'm giving you a power, something for you to think about and to reflect. So, now, why would Muhammad Islam be able to carry the weight of a Quran that a mountain can't carry? Was it his physical being? Was it his mind? Or was it his heart and his character? So, moving along, we wanted to try to get to where we want to go. So, now, keeping that in mind, let us move to Quran again, further into Quran. And I'm going to go... I'm going to go to the board, but you go to Surah 56, Ayat 74. Wacky, 60, 56.
supreme, but it's mighty and powerful. Okay, now, if from there you see this, you should see this. Now I'm going to Ayat 96, and that same story. 96. Hope you have your Quran. Now, if you go to 90. I at 96 in the same surah, 56, you're going to see the exact same thing. The exact same. Basambi, Bismi, Rambi, Gal, Adin. Glorify, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. The name of your rap, the powerful. You should see the exact same. Exact. And the translation should be exact same. I mean, we know that's mighty, powerful, great. Even though Akbar is great, but the script is like that. With power, might, supreme. And so now you you have you have that. I'm sure you see that again. I know it's there. You know, I wasn't looking in the Quran, but I, I hope you I hope you see that. I know you we doing it this way and, and anyway at Jumar, you can talk back and say, All right, brother, mama, I see it, I see it, you know. <laughs> so anyway, in that I at ninety six, exactly the same, right? Okay. Yes, it's at the end. Ninety six. For seven B B yes. Miss me rub be girl I mean. Exactly the same. Glorify the name of your Lord, the mighty. Okay, you got that, right? That's two times. It occurs three times like that in the Quran. Three times. Now, if you go to Surah 69, Surah 69, Ayat 52. 69, Ayat 52. Okay? 59, I at 52, and 69, 52, you should see the exact same expression, exactly the same. And what is that? Glorify the name of your Lord, you should see the mighty, but you don't see the mighty. If you're reading Yusuf Ali, you don't see the mighty. So, okay, Allah says in Surah 69, Ayah 52, I'm, I, I have it, I'm just flipping again, it's usually always at the end. Fasepi, Bismi, Rabbi Gar Ali, right? If you're reading the Arabic, but even if you don't know the Arabic, look over to the Arabic. Remember that picture. Look in the Arabic, and you will see the same word, Adin. Right? The exact same word. Just look over into the Arabic. Don't be afraid. Don't say, I don't know. Look into the Arabic. You see Adin. In the Arabic, it's the exact same expression. Then glorify the name of your Lord, the mighty, the supreme. I think this is Ali's translation. Others will say the powerful, the mighty, right? Now I want you to pay close attention in this 69. Now look, in, if you're in Yusuf Ali's translation, look over into the English. What do you see? I'm looking at it. So glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High. You see, there's an oversight there. That's why, alhamdulillah, we read what we can to try to help, and then we go to Arabic to try to help. Now, if you go to all the other places, 56 and 74, 56 and 96, you will see, glorify the, in English translation, glorify the name of your Lord, the Mighty, the Powerful, or I think Yusuf Ali translation, the supreme, but it's power, right? Might. But here, although the Arabic is the same, 
His translation says the Most High, El Ala. Now what happened, I mean, you can clearly see that. It shouldn't be the Most High, it should be the Might, the Supreme. So there's an oversight, I'll put it that way, an oversight, that I caught years ago. But instead of it saying Adim, it said the Most High, El Ala. And that happened. Why? Because in sort of 87, if you go to 87, it's called al Ala, And it says the same thing, except it doesn't say Adim. It says Ala, al Ala, the Most High, which is what we say when we're in such the Suju, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified Subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord, the Most High. So, instead of Adim here being mighty and powerful, there's an oversight there, and it's, and he have the Most High. You see? So I caught that a while ago, but I, that's what I wanted you to see. It's three times that. The name of your Lord, the Mighty. Boom, you saw it. You saw it for yourself. Then you went somewhere else. You saw it for yourself. You go here, and you see exact same words, exact adim, exact same, but the English translation, and I've looked at several of the, even the modern updates on the Yusuf Ali translation, and it has the most high. But if you go to uh, Surah 87, you will see where that came from. Go to 87, Allah, the Most High. You see? It says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sembi Hismi Rabbik El El Allah. Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High. Now, brothers and sisters, this only occurs in Quran one time that way. Glorify the name of your Lord, El Allah, the Most High. And you know what's interesting about this is we say this in sajda when we're in our lowest position, right? When we're in our lowest position, we say, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory to my Lord, the Most High. So you can be saying a phrase over and over again and inadvertently say that somewhere else. So I can understand that. Fesepi, fesepi. This me because you you're saying this so much, and that happens, you know. But I just want you to understand: if you're reading the English, you're gonna see Allah, but it's really this, the mighty, the powerful. And you, you know, and we'll get to this, but you know, El Allah, you say, simply history, replicate El Allah, you say, Subhanahu wa taala, Subhanahu wa taala, when you're in such. A when we're in our most humble position, as Muhammad the Prophet says, when seven bones touch the ground, you completely humbled yourself. So, again, we stand with this Adim, which we know occurs in terms of this phrase, glorify the name, the name of your Lord, the mighty Adim. Okay? Adim. So, we got that. Now, If you have a, another translation, they probably have that. Uh, the mighty, the powerful, right? The supreme. So that's an oversight. Now, okay, so we see that. Now we want to make the connection, as we see it, from Quran with bone, right? And if you go to 23, you will see Edom man, home home. But I didn't take you there. We're going to go to Quran, sort of 75. 75. You know what 75 is? I think that, that's, uh, I believe that's Yom el right? The day of resurrection, right? Kiyam, Kiyam, right? And in that sort of 75, Allah tells us, Yeah, I have it on the board, and you can see. 
Yes. He am man. Now, you want to see this as bones. You, can you get this? Okay. As bones. The iron, the fault, and the mean. In sort of what you, what you have, you said, Allah says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It says, I swear by the resurrection, right? La uksimu biyaumelikiyama. Yeah, standing, like we stand up for Salah. And Allah says, and I do swear <coughs> by this. This is beautiful. 